Messi. Oh, what a goal it is! Hi, my name is Jens Nowotny, former football player from Bayer Leverkusen, and you are listening to the Bola Bola Show. Hello and welcome. This is the Bola Bola Show. I'm Elvin here, accompanied by the usual suspects, scattered all around the Klang Valley here in Malaysia, Mr. Bala and Steven. So how's it going, guys? Bala? Elvin, thanks for the scattering. <laughs> uh, things are good as usual. Uh, how are you doing, Sivan? Everyone, I'm fine, doing fine. So, once again, it's another episode of the Bola Bola Show podcast. And, mm, of course... What's up, la? What's up, guys? And, of course, again, you know, we managed to get another special guest in our podcast. And mm. this episode is none other than Mr. Jens Novotny. Mm. Now, guys... When you think wow. of Jens Novotny, you think of Bayer Leverkusen, right? Yes. And of yes. course, when you think of Bayer Leverkusen, obviously the first thing is Neverkusen. No, oh, no, no, yeah. no, 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 argue, no arguments about it. I mean, obviously, yes, we grew up, uh, you know, in the in the late nineties, early two thousands, watching Bundesliga highlights, Champions League games, and all that. But you know, when it comes to Bayer Leverkusen, there's always this. What might have been because you know that was a fantastic team that went all the way to the Champions League final in 2002, but just couldn't, you know, they just couldn't, you know, uh, how do we say, uh, you know, take the next one final step further to become champions. Uh, obviously, they lost the Champions League final and then they lost the German League Cup, I think, and then also they lost the Bundesliga title. So, guys, you know, I mean, what, what, what's your What's your view on that squad? I mean, what, what can we actually talk about that squad in the first place? I think, you know, if you look back at the, the Leverkusen squad, uh, one interesting character is, was definitely the manager, right? Mm-hmm. Klaus Topmoller. What, what, what do you guys remember about him? For me, what I always remember when I look at him is, is his curly hair. You know, mm-hmm. it's a guy, you know, off the stands there, a bit animated in character and, and, and with, with those curls. He's like a really very old school kind of manager. Yeah, I mean, his, his appearance came off like that. But uh, what, what, what do you guys think about Top Muller? I mean, obviously, the curly hair, yeah. Who, how to forget? <laughs> yeah, we I can't mean. forget that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, he had that distingu- distinguished look la, that you just cannot forget. Uh, mm. But t- tactically wise, I think, you know, he was, I mean, he was, he was an outstanding manager. I think he, he really managed to build this, uh, you know, this, this squad. Uh, you know, into a very formidable side. Just, yes. just, just couldn't take them. You know, just you know that one more step gear before they can actually win something. That was the part where he was lacking. But I think overall, not, he wasn't a really a bad manager. Yeah, and 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 when you look back at the at the squad, right? So so Bala, why don't you just like highlight some of those Leverkusen stars from that squad? Uh, for me, basically, before going there, I think the team. Mm. He created a very good, I think it's typically German squad with, you know, never die attitude, whoever you can be. And uh, especially a solid team. Only, I think, uh, maybe I think due to luck, and uh, perhaps I think he would just finish across the line, or at least he would want a title. But um, I think the team has a lot of good players, such as, you know, the Evergreen, the Bud, who always used to score penalty. Mm-hmm. Not to forget, you know, Lucio, you know, the, the chest thumping defender who would yep. score the goal. Very- Oh, when Lucio takes off on those runs. Yes, oh, he man. just forget himself and then when the yeah. comes back, you know, that's building spirit. And not to forget the uh, defensive midfielder, Kasten Ramelo, whereby I, when I used to play football manager, he's the first guy I used to go and take because he wants his cheap. Another one is uh, is quite good. And uh, one of the top Really, players. Bala? Kasten yes. Ramelo? Yeah. The first guy off your board. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Not to forget the uh, Bastu uh, with the uh, what do you call that? The, the, what, the attacking midfielder guy. Yep. Yeah. Bastu was the playmaker, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. 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 Bastu was a playmaker, but uh, I think uh, they gave they gave Balak more of a free role. Yeah. In that mm-hmm. squad. Yeah. But okay. uh, also Colin Newell, I think a very good striker. I think he nearly scored against Brazil in 2002 World Cup as well. Mm-hmm. And let's not forget uh, Diego Placente, I think the guy who marked over in 2002. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, it was the uh, Pochettino who made the tackle. But mm. I think for me, I think one of the good defenders. He only played the live left back, but uh, in uh, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Zina I was playing def- uh, as a defender, but I think it's quite good. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and yeah, and, and of course, uh, you know, they had they had players like Zero Beto, who had yes. an outstanding season, but yet still wasn't good enough to be part of the Brazil squad in that World Cup. And why? Why? Because he plays on the left. Who's on the left? Well, I think it. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, another Roberto. Right? I mean, of, of course, of course, Roberto Carlos. But yeah. um, maybe because of the tactics that was. Uh, I mean, Scolari had a sort of like a three-five-two tactics. So I think he required on the left a, a, a player that can do both. Whereas mm. Roberto was an out-and-out winger, not really the kind of player that you can drop back and defend. So he mm. was. So he definitely didn't suit it. For 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 that Brazil squad, but you know, I think he should have at least got a you know at least a squad place because he was good. He was he was a fantastic player, and another player, of course, uh, you know, I don't. I mean, of course, at that, by that time he was definitely at the twilight of his career, but he was still scoring goals. Ulf Kirsten, oh, don't forget yeah. me. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know how long um, it was thirty plus or thirty five, thirty six, but you know, he was still scoring goals. Yeah, and still in those goals, yep. yeah, and and of course you know that that Leverkusen side also had a young up and coming Bulgarian player, Dimitar Berbatov, who back then of course you know was also, but in years to come you know he'll develop as one of the best players in Europe, and of course Elwin, you 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 will know the rest, especially when United sign him. Oh yes, Dimitar Berbatov. Who who can forget Dimitar Berbatov? I mean, it it all basically. This this Leverkusen side was really a catapulting moment for for many of these guys, and uh, like what you mentioned, Berbatov, and of course uh, this was also the season where I would say Michael Balak really put a stamp, you know, mm-hmm. really really put a stamp, a, a mark in world football, you know, for his energy, his determination, his his finishing, because they actually gave him an attacking midfielder role, and what a dynamo he was for Leverkusen, you know, in the middle of the field. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it was really amazing. Yeah. I think he was the he was the engine there with the partnership bus too. So I think he, he's more kind of like a box to box midfielder, and I think he did his job well. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Of course, you know, um, I'm not going to talk about their Bundesliga run because uh, obviously, you know, they they finished second in the league. I think it was it behind Dortmund, Dortmund who won that they season. Finished, yeah, they finished behind Dortmund, and that was also very heartbreaking for them because. They, they they were actually in the lead uh, with three more games to go, quite a comfortable lead, and end up losing two out of the three games. Oh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Then of course they lost the DFB Pokal to Schalke. Yeah. Uh, uh, another. Rue Valley. Yeah, I yeah. mean they, they 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 took the lead. Remember they yeah. took the lead one nil to Berbatov before Schalke hit back with four goals, and I mean that that was, if that wasn't painful enough, and I I suppose you know. This one, the Champions League run. I mean, okay, I don't know. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know whether we can say the Champions League run was a painful one for them or a fairy tale run for them. Because, like it or not, Leverkusen at the start of the season, nobody would have expected them to go all the way, right? Yeah, certainly. And and, and I think if you look at it, it it was definitely a fairy tale, right? Mm. For 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 Leverkusen to actually get there. And bear in mind, if you ask me, the Champions League format during that time to me is even more difficult than what it is today. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. because you have that two, you have to get past two group stages. You know, it it, be, it becomes a really very lengthy format where you really have to get past, get get yourself out of those groups. And mm-hmm. and Leverkusen, you know, my goodness, they 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 actually you know did did so well and had a great uh, run against English opposition, especially. Yeah. 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 Great. Yeah, but also, and, and also not to forget, I think the two groups also is not easy because they were facing Barcelona. Yep. Then, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they also facing uh, the first group was Barcelona, Lyon, Fenerbahce, and this was a Lyon who I think had a great run in their league. Mm. And the second group stage also was tough because they think uh, the Arsenal, Deportivo, La Coruña, even Juventus, and uh, so it was a group of death if you ask me. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was the Deportivo. A lot of you guys may not know, but Deportivo La Coruña at that time was a force to be reckoned with. I mean, yeah. it wasn't it wasn't Spanish league. wasn't just about Real Madrid and Barcelona. Deportivo La Coruña always was there. Always was there to play that dark horse role. Kind of like what Atletico Madrid today is. But back then, you know, uh, Diego Tristan, uh, Juan Carlos. Yeah. I mean, these were fantastic players. And for Leverkusen to be able to top the group ahead of them, that's remarkable, right? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Really amazing run. And then and then what happens then for them to get out of the group and then meet Liverpool in yeah. the quarters. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, bear in mind, Liverpool won the first leg 1-0 at Anfield. But it was yep. the second leg where I think things really took off. What an, uh, what an amazing performance. I think Michael Balak, again, as you mentioned, the, the heartbeat of this, this Leverkusen side. Yeah, he pushed the team all the way to there. I think he's one of the inspiration side who I think made them to get past the stage and then meet the MU in the uh, semi-final. Oh boy, mm. that semi-final guys! Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure you'll never forget, Elvin. Yeah, so for me, you know, as much as the Leverkusen players, the Leverkusen guys had a lot of uh, heartbreak in this season. For me, this was the heartbreak moment. You know, in mm-hmm. that semi-final yeah. against. MU, of course, you know it was it was a real nail biter of a semi. You know, in the end, uh, the level Leverkusen got through on the away goals rules, but mm-hmm. uh, I, I I really remember so well that that second leg semi final, that real nail biter where uh, you know Diego Placente, in fact, uh, made a goal line clear, clearance very late in the game in the 88 minute when uh, Diego Folan. Actually shot the ball, but you know, no, the, I thought I thought the thing was really going in, but Placente was there, you know, to clear yeah. it and save, you know, clear his lines, and there it was, you know, Leverkusen made it to the final. And, and, yeah. and right, right up to that point, Diego Forlan hasn't scored a goal yet from you, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Hmm. So that goal would have. I mean, going to give him an instant hero in United, lah. Yeah, and imagine that, right? That that's almost entering Fergie time territory, you know, as you guys know, eighty-eight, mm, yeah, yeah, ninety-eight, yeah. 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 <laughs> so you know, and they keen time it, to did keen time to did what he did with Juventus, but unfortunately, it's level person. Yeah, yeah, certainly because keen, keen, keen really made that 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 captain's comeback. You know, Bala, yeah, I think yeah. you remember that very well. And he, yes, he yes. scored. Yeah, he scored. He scored. He, he put them. He put them in uh, the lead, and then of course uh, Neuville, Oliver Neuville equalized, and, uh, and Leverkusen held their guard very well mm-hmm. to finally make it into the final. Yep, yep, and of final. course the final was against Real Madrid, Real yeah. Madrid that was you know uh, in on the verge of becoming something so big that you know of course this was the Gal- the at the beginning of yes. the whole Galacticos era. Of course, they signed Luis Figo season before that, uh, and then that season they signed Zinedine Zidane for a world record fee, mm. and, and of course you know you had Raúl Morientes up front. I mean, it was it was difficult from the beginning itself for Leverkusen to to deal with this Real Madrid side, and to make it even more difficult was the fact that our guest of today's show had to miss the final. What was that? I mean, why was it that, Elvin? Yeah, because he uh, Jens Jens Nowotny had a very heartbreaking injury in the second leg when he played against Manchester United. So, you know, it was it was really a, a very sad moment for him not to make it to the final. And uh, and also, that also uh, hampered his chances for playing in the World Cup that year as well, the 2002 World Cup. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, 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 was, it was not a very good time indeed for, yeah, yeah. for, for him. Yeah. Mm. We'll, we'll find out from, uh, you know, the man himself, what was it like to miss that whole final and all that. I mean, uh, from his... Looking at it from his position, I would say it's it's very really sad because you know you are at that at that part at that part of the season where you know you're, you're almost about to cross the finishing line and then oh, this happens. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, for and, me, and, basically, that game reminds me of uh, Casillas. I remember after the second half, uh, these fellas are pounding, Leverkusen just pounding, and then this. Casillas, I'm not mistaken, the goalkeeper was injured, I think, their main Yeah, Cesar, Cesar Sanchez got injured and Casillas actually, right. in fact, in that game, Bala regained his place back into the starting lineup. Hey guys, was, to be honest, to be honest, yeah. it was only about five seconds ago, I was still thinking that Casillas actually started that Champions League final. No, it was Cesar I had, Sanchez. Yeah, Cesar, Cesar. I had no idea about this. I mean, I mean, not, not at that time, maybe I, I would remember, but now looking back, I have no yeah. idea. Cesar Sanchez, guys. Because I know Casillas started the Champions League final the two seasons before that, the Valencia yeah. 3-0, right? Yeah. And, then, yeah. and, I, and, and then it was dropped. Oh, okay, okay. This mm, is, uh, was, I mean, was, uh, all right. All he right. was going through a bad patch of form, but yeah, like as what Bala was saying, you know, Leverkusen was pounding game. them in the second half. Yeah, I remember it came in around like, I think what, I think second half, I think around 78 minutes, 65 minutes, something like that. And this first was attacking wave of the wave. And you know, I remember this Leverkusen fans, when they were, whenever they cornered, they do like, ooh, 
those kind of things. Yes. And a mm. celebration leather, and then and this was safe. This was safe. Mm. They should easily should won the final. At least about five, five two or five three. Not yeah, yeah. The, the 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 second half they were really you know they 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 won the second half definitely. But you know in the end it's real you know the, the, the they just came so close and that's people, where you know yeah. But yeah, we have to admit. About, people we have to admit, like, guys. Goal. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you uh, have what? to admit, like guys. When it comes to that kind of goal, how can you? Who else? Like, right. I yeah. mean, yeah. okay. I, who else will score that kind of goal? Let let us put it this way. Which, <laughs> which, I, which, I, guy, I, which guy during which guy during that era is possible to you know to to basically do that, guys? I mean, it's, with Zidane, anything was possible. Yeah. And yeah. When, when I mean anything was possible, anything like that kind of goal was possible. He was yeah. he was at the peak of his career, and no question about it. I think when you score a goal like that, yeah. it's hard to be on the losing side. You definitely are going to be on on the winning side. And I mean, credit to Leverkusen. I mean, I mean, I would say you know it's it's a it's a memorable season to look back. Uh, of course, there's so much of possibilities, but I would have at the start of the season. You know, you ask any Leverkusen fan, they would have said none of this was possible. Yeah, yeah, mm. exactly. And 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 in fact, guys, you know, something just occurred to me now. I just realized. I mean, that if 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 you look back at the at the Leverkusen squad those guys that finished runners up right mm-hmm. in in three major competitions mm-hmm. well first like Kasten Ramalo Balak Neuwil Bern Schneider and Hans Jogge but also had a silver medal in the world cup you know they they basically uh, yeah so so, yeah. so it was four Wow, it was really four heartbreaks for those guys yeah mm, okay the I mean, big impact will be on the champions league and also uh, what do you call that uh, world cup final like. yeah the world cup final yeah mm, okay okay i mean definitely it was an interesting time in football for all of us uh, we were still in our early 20s not, we're not that old as compared <laughs> to uh, what we are today but you know when we look back at these moments it definitely you know brings back a lot of memories uh, a lot of interesting thing to talk about and hence why we are so glad that we can have one of the most important figures of that leverkusen side to talk with us on this episode so stay tuned Bernd Schneider with a free kick and he picks out Lucio for 1-1 Leverkusen a level swiftly it is their Brazilian center back who powers it past Cesar Sanchez slips over the top to Roberto Carlos it pops out to Zidane a moment of magic inspiration from Zinedine Zidane. Few players in world football would even contemplate going for this, but he pulls it off. And Real Madrid on hard time lead 2-1. So guys, here we are with our guest today all the way from Germany, former Leverkusen captain and German international Mr. Jens Nowotny. Welcome to the show Jens and how have you been? Thank you. Feeling great um, in this Yes, sometimes also ridiculous times when uh, a small virus rules the world. Yes, exactly. It's yeah. very, very challenging times, in fact. And uh, perhaps, Jens, you want to let our listeners know what projects are you currently involved in? I work with a partner in a consulting um, company to bring uh, companies to to soccer and uh, also to connect uh, former players from, uh, it's called a uh, club then of national players from Germany and bring them in to companies like a speaker, motivational trainer or trainer in soccer. And with other partner, I have uh, some feelings about a restaurant. We got a restaurant and a, um, also something for um, uh, entertainment house uh, to have a, uh, um, some uh, parties or also like uh, with the arts or something like that. Mm, and I, um, yeah, it's, on the business case, it's very interesting. And also some social projects um, having in mind with uh, small kids, children, to bring them to, to movement in, uh, in special ways from brain and also from, from the body. I see. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, so, Jens, of course, uh, you know, most football fans will recognize during your time with uh, Bayer Leverkusen. But your first club was actually Culture SC, where you spent five years with them. Would you like to share with us about your time with that club? 
Yeah, it was a great time. Uh, last week I, I called with uh, Ike Hessler and I played with him in, uh, in, uh, in Karlsruhe. Mm -hmm. And it was for, for my starting days, uh, being a professional soccer player, a perfect time. We have a, 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 an unbelievable good team from the spirit, from the personalities. There was really, you can say, if, if soccer is a team sport, then this KSC team will also will stand over our because it uh, have uh, bring me to yeah to the, my first step and uh, to become a good soccer player. And uh, this is what I mean that Karlsruhe was perfect for me, especially trainer Winfried Schäfer was. For young players, not only me, but also Oliver Kahn, Mehmet Scholl, Oliver Kreuzer and uh, Michael Sternkopf. He also take care of them and make them to, st to stars. Wow. As a youngster, what made you choose to be a central defender? Is this the position something that you always wanted to play or you have any favorite player where you evaluate and uh, any coach uh, was instrumental in bringing up the best of the skill set you had for that position. No, I, I got a, a injury, um, a, a rupture from uh, the uh, PCL and uh, left knee. And uh, before this, uh, I was a midfielder, also hmm. in, in the youth national team and the trainer um, I have in Karlsruhe and uh, um, uh, under 19. And he bring me with soft hands to back to the to the pitch and say listen stay in the back you have an, a new position as central defender because then you have the whole match in front of you. you you know where the ball is and where all players are because you are the last man and um, so at this time my career as a central central defender um, starts because of this trainer and it was unbelievable great that he brings me into the the match again with this strategy and it helps me so much i see and uh, you know and then in 1996 you know you moved to leverkusen where you had some amazing years with them so you know one interesting thing is playing alongside lucio in defense you know and you know lucio is very well known for taking off on those forward runs so was it mostly planned by design in terms of tactics or was it just the character of Lucio to just, you know, do it on his own? Well, no, it was uh, tactics because uh, the trainer, mm -hmm. Christoph Baum, bring, take me aside uh, for the first match and uh, he walk on the pitch and uh, he bring me to the midline and he said to me, look, this line, you will never go over. <laughs> okay. You stand in the back because you know Lucio is running and also in the, in the front and um, in, in German, you, you, you have a, a word like wild like a bird. And so I had to stay in the back mm -hmm. and Lucio in, had to, to go with the ball in the front and score and it, it works. So... It's it also, like I said, in, in Karlsruhe, also this, the same was in Leverkusen because uh, it's a, a team, a, the team that we are. Um, yeah, only the, the goalkeeper can only win when the striker scores and the striker can only win if the goalkeeper saved the ball. So was it like Lucio and me? He was the front and to me, I gave him the backup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. And, and of course, uh, you know, one, when talking about Bayer Leverkusen, you know, we can never forget that fairy tale run in 2002. In fact, uh, just before we started the podcast, as we were telling you that we watched some of your Champions League games at 2.30 in the morning during our time. So it's, it's really a memorable season for you guys. But unfortunately, you came close to win the domestic treble. Uh, well, I mean, looking back now, what are your thoughts goes through your mind about that season? It was a year, but uh, you, you have to say if you go to a final like the Champions League, then it's the work uh, from two years. 
years because um, one season you prepare, you you get the, the last. Um, in this case, you you were the, the second place in the Bundesliga, and then you're qualified for the Champions League, and then you had to run another year for for a final. And um, it was a great two years we have in Leverkusen with uh, unbelievable games with a very very strong team, and um, yeah. The only thing was so, so, so sad was that uh, we not bring any uh, cup at home so that we, um, give, we, we give us a present out to ourselves and that we missed. And this is uh, also this, in this years when we uh, um, meet again players from this area, um, then um, we talk about this. And it was sad that we didn't win um, one of those cups but that's life, that's um, soccer and uh, other um, professionals in other sports will uh, say the same, that uh, it's, only, it's, it's better to be the second place than to get down in the second league. Mm -hmm. And of course, also during that same season, you know, you, you suffered a bad injury in the semi-final second leg against Manchester United. Uh, what goes through a player's head and thoughts, you know, during moments like those, you know, for us, like fans, what we can see on TV is just an injury may have happened and all that, but we may never be able to understand the, the full extent of the situation. And in this special situation, you, you can't think about, ever, uh, about anything because um, mm -hmm. day after this, uh, everybody comes and, oh, some shit happens and for you and it's, it's unbelievable hard and uh, then, um, then you think, oh, okay, you're the, the center of the universe and everybody takes care uh, of you. And um, yeah, three days later, by Leverkusen play again and you sit on the side uh, with, a, um, yeah, with a injury and you can't do anything and waiting for, the, for your surgery. So what I... Um, expect after weeks or months is that uh, the world or the sun is shining again tomorrow with or without you and uh, the, it's always it, it, it goes further and uh, nobody is waiting for you so this is what um, what the business soccer or professional business is bringing with him that um, there is no thanks no nothing you you had to bring your your um your power on the field and if you can't do this then yeah then it's hard for yourself but that's life also in this case but the, moving on uh this injury also caused you uh, missed the uh, 2002 world cup whereby germany ended up as a runner-up i think this also devastated you in a way right yeah it, it's uh, also and this was was hard because uh, um, Rudi Völler said that um, before the, the the World Cup, if also before where, um, when uh, I got injury, was uh, everything everything can happen, but uh, no injury for Oliver Kahn or Jens Nowotny. This is what he um, proclaimed to others, and uh, one of thing these things happened, but. For me, yeah, it, it was hard that I missed my first um, uh, World Cup, but um, nobody knows if uh, we go in this 2002 World Cup also in the final when I played. So nobody knows this. Maybe there we lose in the quarter final or a half final when I was on the and I've been uh, uh, when I click to be on the pitch. Maybe nobody knows. So. Um, like this times how it goes it was perfect also for for the for the national team for me it's another six months in rehabilitation and uh, another focus on myself mm -hmm. of course uh, you know germany really had a tremendous run of the world cup unexpectedly and yet they went all the way to the final uh, moving on on your career, Jens, I mean you only moved abroad at the age of 32 where you had a short spell in dinamo Zagreb, but uh, did you receive any offer before that to play outside Germany, maybe in the Premier League or Serie A, La Liga, perhaps? Yes, 
I got uh, some some offers uh, in, in young age from Spain, also from Italy, uh, some clubs. And uh, after um, being Leverkusen, I got an offer from uh, also from Arsenal London. Um, but um, I, I stayed in, in Leverkusen because everything was great there. Um, I'm not hunting for for money in this in this business. Uh, I'm hunting for um, feel good with the team, feel good with the with the stuff around, and um, it's for my family. Uh, it was the decision or to to stay in Leverkusen? But um, after years, then uh, when I when I um, retire then in Zagreb after only six months when we lived there, I. I remember this time as a, yeah, that I make the mistake not to leave Leverkusen earlier and go to another country because this is very, very special for for the personality and for the family. And um, in, in the six months in, in Zagreb, that was great for the family. And with this experience, normally I had to go a little earlier in different countries to yeah to to get new expressions to get new um, people to know and the culture and the, the language uh, this yeah was a mistake but not a bad mistake mm -hmm. and uh, Jens you know your first major tournament with Germany was at Euro 2000 and uh, you also featured in the next one 2004 but it wasn't really a memorable outing for both you, yourself, and your national team as uh, you know you, you guys were eliminated from the group stage. So what actually went wrong with, this, with the German team in those competitions? Yeah, was that what I said uh, about Karlsruhe or Leverkusen um, mm -hmm. was not at Euro 2000 with the national team because we are not, not kind of team on the, uh, or outside the pitch. There was a group of uh, Munich players, some group of uh, Leverkusen players, some of them players, all the groups and, and every group stays only together and have their own pro problems. And uh, then there was also um, and the, the problem that uh, Lothar Matthäus is coming back from, uh, from uh, New York, I think from outside and uh, nobody from the Munich player except him like two years before as the leader because mm -hmm. he is out from the from the um yeah from the monitor from uh, from from everybody of us because he, he he didn't play in europe and um so this is there was a big problem that we are not kind of team anymore on the on the pitch so the and dressing room, the dressing room wasn't really united at, at that time no 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 not not really, not really. Mm. And 2004, okay, in this uh, European Championship was, um, we didn't play so, so bad. And uh, we lose, I think, 1-0 uh, against uh, England. And uh, that was was some kind of, okay, you can, you can lose against England. Um, and this is not, not so hard, but uh, um, the, the, we, we played then, uh, against um was it against Czech Czech Republic yeah, Czech Republic. yeah. match and James Lebeck. and they they beat us with a yeah they say a B team and uh, you know if some A team is under pressure and the B team is through and they say hey, it's easy to play then you have no pressure on it then everything can happen so this is something okay was not so new uh, to to go out um, the tournament um, in the in the round but um, it was hard but not so hard as the euro 2000 this was yeah it was shameable mm. okay. all right despite the setback uh, you did have a good time and you have earned about 48 caps and uh, scored one goal for germany uh, do you still remember that solitary goal you have scored for your country? Oh, I, I think so, that it was the unbelievable special goal 
against a team when we beat 9-1 and I scored the seventh goal, I think, something like that. It's not so, so it's not so 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 um, uh, very very special when you score a, a goal when we win seven or something like that, seven zero or seven one. I don't. Yeah, I think it was in Freiburg. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, basically, it was a, a seven nil win over Malta. That's where you actually scored your your first, your one yeah. and only goal for Germany. Yeah. Yeah, then that's very important. This goal, mm-hmm. okay. you know. I mean, uh, surely you remember uh, that moment when you scored that goal, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I don't know if it was uh, the seven zero or seven two or seven one something like that, but I know that I scored a goal. Um, yeah, in a friendly match, so nothing nothing special. So when you when you score seven goals uh, for like a team. And you score one goal, then uh, it's it's not so special. And when you score one goal in, in a Euro Championship or in a World Cup with uh, in a half final, and you you win one zero, then it's very special. But this one, it was nice. It was nice, but um, I, yeah. I'm um, defender, no striker. So I think it's okay. 48 games, one goal. That's mm-hmm. okay. Okay. All right. And of course, you know, as a centre-back, you have come across many great attackers during your time as a career. Who would you regard as the most difficult opponent that you ever face? Thierry Henry. Mm-hmm. Thierry Henry. Was, yeah, unbelievable fast. Mm-hmm. And not only fast without the ball. He was so fast with the ball and he was a very intelligent player and um, he used his strengths for 100% perfect. So it was also when we, when we play against him every Leverkusen, then I said to Robert Kovac, um, my teammate, listen, when he got a ball, you come two against one or I come to you two against one and yeah, because you have no chance against him in one one. Mm-hmm. So theory on re it is okay. Interesting. Yeah. All right. So so since you know talking about you and your partner Robert Kovac at the back, so you guys were centre backs, and you know for what about for all the youngsters out there who have dreams, you know, to to play that centre back position to be as strong as yeah. solid as you guys, you know, can you maybe please give some advice? on what sort of uh, traits that will make them a great centre-back? Yeah, it's, it's uh, a tip for, like, not even for centre-backs, for every guy or girl who wants to to become a soccer professional. It means uh, work beats talent. This is one of the most important things, that you have to work every day uh, to to become faster, to become stronger, to to focus more on what you do, and don't miss the the funny times, because uh, soccer is and means to have fun, and if you have fun, then you can work harder. Not the hard work must be on the first step. You have to you have fun then you work very, very hard and very good. And it, it doesn't matter. You, you even can work more and more if you have fun. And this is discipline is normal, but uh, this is not special. You had to have discipline also like uh, if you want to be a striker or a defender or a goalkeeper, doesn't matter. Most important thing, fun, then work hard, then work harder discipline and then work hardest Mm -hmm. okay there you go kids Mm -hmm. out there it's have fun and work hard and also discipline as well all right so guys any last question for jens so uh jens you know uh, what what do you see the future of the german national team moving forward oh we have many 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 good players Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh we have a team at this time. 
because um, yeah, the the problem sometimes is that the the missing part of a leader, and the, the last match, okay, we uh, we as a, the national team we can not play as good as we as they can, but um, players like Kimmich or Neuer or, or Thomas Müller, okay, he's now out, but not 400%, but they missed the match. So I think uh, the, the, the great challenge for Joachim Löw would be to create a, a good mix, a good team from young players, talented players and uh, leaders. And um, if the, the one or two like Kimmich or Goretzka, Crystal uh, like a leader, then we have a good chance to hunt for next year for the European champion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yes, right. for me, uh, Jens, uh, basically, uh, we have seen uh, defenders been during the 90s. They used to sit down and mark the defense, uh, sorry, the strikers and the attacking midfielders. But now I think the game has changed whereby uh, I think the defenders has been part of the involvement in the defense and also in the attack. So uh, would you like to, to, what are the traits required to be a defender at this current generation right now? For, for me, the change, the one thing is very, very um, uh, special that changed. Um, the, the thinking of how to a striker had to play soccer. Um, for me, uh, in my career, was very important. Strike um, defenders had to defend, and now in this time, the defender had to open the the game with the first, second, or third pass, or coming to the front. Not like Lucio to uh, get a ball and do it in a solo, but um, with the yeah, with a pass or with a small solo or something like that. But it had they have to play uh, more offensive. And uh, it's um, it's funny. Yesterday I talked with a under with a huge coach from the national team from Germany, and um, he also said that um, the focus is not anymore on the the pitch on the field um, with uh, to play with the ball but to have things around like um, training with uh, cognitive, with neuronetics, with uh, um, something mindfulness, with the uh, focusing and uh, this changes from, um, from the pitch away to, yeah, to the classroom or to one-to-one uh, -one sessions. This is also a change, and for me, it's uh, too much. But that's the time uh, where, also in professional soccer, the data miners come in. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, all right. Um, as for me, well, um, no for the question because uh, you pretty much have covered everything. Especially, I wanted to ask you about you know the current setup of the German national team. That you already covered that you know nowadays it's no longer about what's happening on the field, but it's a lot of factor off the field that takes place, which I think that, you know, the DFB is, uh, you know, miles away ahead of the game compared to most other football association. Would you agree with that? Uh, one of the, the, the leading part um, of this uh, year takes control from DFB, but uh, um, it stands and falls with the, with the personality of the players and um, last last years they discussed to change how players get the training um, in the Nachwuchsleistungszentrum, the youth center, the professional youth center from Germany because um, also this was a very very big problem that uh, you can take a left defender out from a from a let's say from Freiburg and put him to Hertha BSC Berlin and uh, yeah, it it works, it works, but it works positively like negative, the same. It's nothing special anymore. And um, this is also uh, some somebody like um, Messi or like Cristiano Ronaldo or Mario Götze. Look the the what what way Mario Götze is going the last years. 
from a very, very, very special player um, to a player who plays uh, yeah, in a team which everybody say he's part of the team, but nothing more special. Mm -hmm. And this changes also. In Germany, we miss the, the special. I, uh, let's see, maybe we have some with Leroy Sané. But um, yeah, let's see how he act in uh, Bayern Munich, Bayern Munich uh, this year. And um, maybe he is the point to be to have a special national team. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. All right, guys. Uh, any last question there? No, uh, not, nothing more from me. In fact, uh, thank you very much, Jens, for joining us today. Thanks. Thanks. Mm -hmm. What about you, Bala? Yes, Stephen. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, thanks, Jen, for your time. And uh, we really, uh, truly appreciate for your time in this uh, Bola Bola show. It's been a really honor to speak to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. And any last word from yourself, Jens Novotny? Oh, so like uh, this, uh, if you can go six months uh, back, then nobody would expect that... Uh, you have a Zoom conference or something like that in a post podcast because um, um, in normal times, everybody look to, to the neighbor where it's here and not so far away. And for me, it's very, very interesting <laughs> to, to have, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like this, to have uh, something like this podcast with you guys. It's very interesting also for me. And uh, thank you that uh, I've been, that I can do this uh, video or this uh, interview with you. Thank you. Mm, okay. And most welcome as well. And of course, you know, it, it is true, you know, because looking back at ourselves six months ago, we, it would have been uh, out of our dreams to <laughs> to be able to talk to someone who we've been so used to watching on TV, playing on the field growing up. So yes, you know, on behalf of everyone in the Bola Bola show, thank you so much for being with us. And with that said, we will end this week's episode. Goodbye for now. Thank you.